Hello everybody, we're going to be talking about medians and centroids today. So first of all, let's discuss what a median and a centroid is. A median is a line segment that's going to go from a vertex to the opposite side of the triangle. Now, just so that we're clear, the opposite side is the side of the triangle that does not make up the angle where the vertex is. Okay, so this is our vertex. These are the two sides that create the vertex. This is the opposite side. Okay, so if I was to draw in the median, it's going to go to the midpoint of the opposite side. And that is our median. Now, something that's pretty important about medians is that this opposite side becomes bisected into two congruent pieces. That's going to come up pretty important in a minute. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about is a centroid. A centroid is the point where all medians intersect. So, first of all, we've got to find the midpoint of each of these sides. That looks like midpoint here. I'd say probably about right there. And maybe right here. Let's quickly draw in those medians. Remember we're going from the vertex to the opposite side. All right, so this point where they all intersect is our centroid. Oops. All right, so we have our medians and our centroids. Now there are some pretty important things that we can real recognize with a centroid, okay? And this is one of them. The distance from the vertex to the centroid is two-thirds the distance of the entire segment. That means if I start from here and I travel along this one segment, I'm going to travel two-thirds the distance to get to this point, which means that there's only one-third remaining to make up the whole segment. Well, that's significant because this piece right here is twice the size of this smaller piece. It is a 2 to 1 ratio. That means whatever size this piece is, this has to be half the size. Whatever size this is, this has to be twice the size. It's going to make doing the math on these triangles a lot easier. So, here's a, an image that we're going to use. If we notice we have the medians drawn throughout the triangle in our centroid. First problem says find the length of AE, AE, right here, one of our sides, and AC, which is the entire length, if EC equals 15, EC. Well, these are all medians. That means that I can mark these two pieces congruent to each other. And if EC equals 15, and this is congruent to AE, this must also equal 15. Well, the next part says AC. AC is just the combination of AE and EC, so if I add 15 and 15 together, I will get a length of 30 units. All right, our next problem asks to determine the length of BQ and QE if BE equals 6. BE is this entire length. Okay, BQ, we said, was 2 thirds that length. So we are looking for 2 thirds of 6. 
All right, well, I can assume that this is over 1, because any whole number can be put over 1. So if I multiply, that's 2 times 6, which is 12, divided by 3 times 1, which is 3, which is going to give me 4. So from B to Q, which is 2 thirds of the distance, is going to be 4. Okay. They also want to know QE. Well, BQ is 4, and we discussed that there's a 2 to 1 ratio between those two pieces. So really, QE is half of whatever BQ is. So Q, oops, E equals half of BQ. That's one half of 4, which is 2. Okay, so we use the fact that this was two-thirds in order to get BQ. We have another problem. <clears throat> Number three says determine the length of DC and DQ if QC equals 12. Well, let's take a look. QC is this piece right here. This is going to be worth 12. The first piece that they ask for is DC. DC is the entire length. Well, we need to figure out the length of DQ in order to get the entire length to do some addition. So let's move on to DQ. DQ is the smaller piece. Oops, it, right here, it's our smaller piece. And we just discussed a moment ago that this is going to be half of the longer piece. So we just have to think about what is half of 12. Well, half of 12 is 6. That's going to give us DQ equal 6. Now that we know, we can just take these two lengths, DQ and QE, to find the entire length of DC, which is going to give us 18. Our last problem, number 4, says determine the length of AQ and AF if FQ equals 5. Why don't you guys take a second to pause this video, try this one out on your own. Keep in mind the ideas of having half lengths compared to twice the size when you're talking about comparing two smaller pieces and also the idea of those pieces being one third the size of the entire length. Okay, pause the video, try it, and we'll discuss it in a second. All right, let's see how you did. It tells us that QF equals 5. So let's mark down where QF is. QF is a smaller piece, and that is worth 5. Now, we're looking for AQ. AQ is the longer piece. This piece is smaller. This piece should be twice the size of QF. So 2 times 5 is going to give us a length of 10. So when I go down and write my answers, AQ, we just found, was 10. And the entire length AF is going to be those two pieces added together. AQ is 10. QF is 5. That's going to give us a length of 15 for AF. Okay, I hope that helped you out a little bit. These problems are... Pretty easy if you can remember the whole 2 to 1 ratio. If they give you the whole length of the segment, just keep in mind that you would want to divide by 3 to get the smaller piece, and then you can double it. Um, as far as medians, just remember that they are the midpoint of the other side connected to the ver opposite vertex. So if you remember midpoint, it's just that those two pieces become equal. All right, best of luck with the rest of these problems, guys. We'll see you soon.